Ciao, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the Super Human Podcast. I am your host, Renato Capasso, and together we will talk about the latest biohacks and scientific discoveries that will turn you from a human into a super human. And it all starts now. Hey there, so today we're going to have a great episode. My interview today is Liz Parrish. She's the CEO of a company called BioViva. But the cool part about it is that we're going to talk about one probably of the greatest biohack out there. And I'm talking about gene therapy. Yep, you heard it right. Gene therapy. How to biohack your genes for better health or potentially reversing aging so just so you know she had a gene therapy or two particular genes i don't want to tell you more i want you to sit down relax and enjoy the episode because this is going to be a very very cool one and it's going to be giving you a very light of hope for those who want to live forever enjoy the episode how are you oh it's such a pleasure to to see you and to have you here like i'm, I'm very so happy <laughs> thank you I'm, I'm happy to be here too i mean here we are 2020 uh trying to have some progress and some fun at the same time <laughs> yeah that's good 2020 such a year hey it was such a year this 2020 um okay i'm gonna go uh Liz, i know you're very busy so i'm gonna go um straight into it and um okay. Um, allow me to say that um, you look fabulous and the reason why I say that is because um, I'm a big fan of you. I've been following you, we, following you since 2015 and 2015 was a special year. I think September 2015. What did you do sure. during that year? Would you like to share that with the audience? Sure. So in September of 2015, I took two gene therapies uh, to treat biological aging, the first two gene therapies in the world to do that. So um, there was a bit of a, a buildup to that. In 2013, my son was diagnosed with uh, type 1 diabetes. And before that, I had been uh, researching and helping educate the world about the use of regenerative medicine. So with my vast knowledge and then my new experience in the gene therapy realm, uh, my company decided to push the button and say, and enough is enough, we could be sitting on medical cures that can not only help adults, but help children as well. And so we went for it. So we made history in, in 2015. Wow, that's, <laughs> that's, that, that's amazing. So you, um, the, the operation that you had was for two genes, right? One was, um, uh, had an effect of tel telomerase, which is the enzyme that yeah. regulates the length of the telomeres, which has the little yeah. cups. And what was the other one? Uh, the other one was a gene therapy called fullastatin that had already been used uh, in past safety and efficacy for Becker's and Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. So it was being used for a muscle wasting disorder, uh, but we thought that it could also be used for an aging population that gets frailer, meaning they lose muscle mass over time. So everyone eventually gets sarcopenia unless you take something to combat that. Uh, this gene therapy would be uh, such a thing that you might take to combat that and increase your muscle mass so that you don't fall down or become incapable of, of doing the things that often old people become incapable of doing. Wow, that's, uh, that's great. Uh, well, I'm very fascinate, fascinated about anything that is genes, genome, epigenetics and so on uh, but I wanted to ask you something so r what do you have um, available right now like the general population and the, the normal person who wants to improve their health um, what do we have right now available that people can use to improve their health Right. So right now, BioViva cannot offer gene therapies. We do research and development Damn. at Rutgers University, and we are designing the gene therapy of the future. So we've spent a couple of years in some animal studies, and we're, we're uh, 
essentially uh, creating what would be considered a vaccine against aging. So it'll be multiple genes that are used to treat aging, hopefully before it happens to people, but help reverse aging when it has. But we do work with a company called Integrative Health Systems. They're mm -hmm. an exclusive partner to BioViva. And we help them by uh, analyzing their patient data. And what they do is they offer gene therapies for regenerative medicine. So it's all done legally under consent between mm -hmm. a doctor and a uh, patient. And uh, the things that they offer, they offer the gene therapies that I took. So they okay. offer tel telomerase inducing gene therapy that lengthens the ends of the your chromosomes. They offer the um, myostatin inhibitor to increase your muscle mass. They also offer Clotho uh, that is for mm, protecting your kidneys against chronic kidney disease and your body against cardiovascular disease. And they offer PGC1 alpha, which is uh, helps with mitochondrial dysfunction. It, it creates healthy, robust mitochondria in old cells. So it's pretty exciting the things that they're doing. Wow. So that that is actually happening right now with this company. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't be in touch with them, <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I know that people Well, let's say for for everyone out there out there, I think a good place to start and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, would be probably doing a genetic test, right? Did yeah, you... sure. You know, you, the, learn about your genes. You know, I mean, you shouldn't just jump into gene therapy because somebody said that they think that it will help you. You should really research it. You yeah. know, you need to become your own best advocate in medicine. I believe in your agency and autonomy to take with your body anything that you want to. I don't think the government should stop you from doing that as long as it doesn't hurt the people around you. Yeah. But I do believe that you should go in well educated. And one way to educate yourself about genes is learning about your own genes, taking some testing, learning about biological aging, taking some testing around that, doing some reading of scientific literature. So I could come on here and I can tell you this mm -hmm. gene therapy lengthens telomeres or this gene therapy increases your muscle mass. But you don't have to take that from me. There are thousands of papers out there, research papers that were done to prove the evidence behind these treatments, and you should go out and read them. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, what you said is an important message for, for, for everyone is do your own research. And, uh, you know, your health is your health. And there are so many great professionals out there. However, I think no matter where you go and who you put your health to, uh, I think it's always good to do a little bit of research, um, you know, because your health is probably the most important tool that you have, right? It's the most important oh, okay. thing that you have. It's it's your most important asset, and we we always say it's your most it's the world's most important currency. Not only were empires built on the backs of longevity, you know, countries industrialized based on how long their population lives, their general lifespan. But your biggest asset going forward is your lifespan and having more time to to create more wealth, whatever that is to you, whether that's, you know, just happiness, spending time outside or or money. You you certainly should have more time healthy doing that, because when we when we start to get sick and die of aging, we are in bad health that costs us, our families and governments a lot of money. And so, you know, there's a lot of reasons to move forward to try to treat that condition. And, and these are the therapies, the, the first line of defense, I believe that will significantly change how long humans live. I mean, what you said is great. And um, um, there is uh, um, David Sinclair that is, uh, I'm sure you know him. and. Uh, um, he says something that I think is very profound, that aging is a disease. And I love seeing age, is, age as a disease uh, for one reason in particular, because since you see, when you see like aging as something natural, you stop fighting, let's say it this way. You, you give it for granted. There is nothing we can do. It's natural. But since you start seeing aging as a disease, you have a line of hope is the disease and perhaps that can be uh, cured. And I think it's, uh, it's a very exciting time to be alive because uh, especially in the last probably 10 years, so many exciting things are happening. One of the things is that finally uh, we can actually measure aging. 
you know, before everyone was talking about, okay, aging, aging, but there was not an official currency for aging. Yes, there was tel telomeres and, and maybe, uh, you know, something else, a biological age, but I think now we have something that we can say, okay, biological age can be measured by uh, what is called, correct me if I'm wrong, a, a methylation clock. That's right. You've done yeah. your research. Yeah, in 2013, I started talking about aging being a disease and nearly got myself cut, uh, kicked out of a couple of nonprofits. <laughs> they they wow. didn't believe that. I, mm -hmm. I inherently believe that. I believe that to this day, anybody who looks at aging can see that it's a clear pathology. It is, in fact, a disease. Mm -hmm. and, and the type of thinking uh, that is uh, around, oh, something being natural and we, we don't want to treat it. Well, you know what? This type of thinking was around cancer. And it wasn't until the 1960s that the United States government started to fund a cure for cancer because advocates like me came out and said, you must do this because people are dying. And they said, no, dying of cancer is natural as part of aging. And now look, because of interventions mm -hmm. into cancer, people live decades past diagnosis. And so, okay, so you're right. How would we treat something if we don't know how to measure it? That is the beauty of the methylation clock. The methylation clock is the most accurate biomarker of biological aging right now in the world. It's accurate within one and a half years of the person's age. That's super significant. And not only that, what the beauty of the methylation clock is that it is a clock that you can actually affect. So we can actually change the outcome with lifestyle or treatments. And that's what we're really excited about doing. We want to see how gene therapies affect the biological age clock. So how does a methylation clock work? Well, it's how your epigenetics are um, uh, presenting themselves. Mm -hmm. So if we had a whole room, if behind me I had, uh, that would be against the quarantine standards right now, but let's say I had 10 people behind me mm -hmm. and they were all chronologically 65. Yeah. Well, why do some of those people go on to dying next year and others go on to living over 100 years of age? It's, it's basically gene expression and genomic instability that really lays rise and increases the mortality risk of the, per, the people in the room. So with regenerative gene therapies, what we're trying to do is affect the genome and make it look and act young again, therefore affecting everything downstream from it. That, that's probably the most simple way to put it. That's great. And for people at home who are listening, I know that you've done a, a test before and after your, your operation. And I think I didn't read the, I read that from a blog, so I'm not sure either if, if it's correct or not, but you reversed your, uh, your um, methylation clock went back of something like crazy, like over over 20 years something like this this was this actually was not a methylation clock so okay. we didn't have the methylation clocks before i did my therapy they were okay. still vastly experimental in 2015. so what what you're referring to is the length of my telomeres so my yes. telomeres yes. did lengthen by over 20 years actually with the final result that we had in the last test so, but that's just the telomeres in my T lymphocytes. So that's just my white blood cells. So we can assume mm -hmm. that we hit quite a few cells in my body, but probably not every one of them, obviously, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's something that we're, we're going back to the drawing board and actually I'm planning to take uh, more gene therapy. Really? Which, which one? Um, uh, that's that's being designed right mm -hmm. now by some some medical okay. doctors and some researchers. Okay. But I'll probably take some more telomerase induction. Mm -hmm. I'll probably take I will take Clotho. I will take PGC one alpha, and I may take more folistatin. <laughs> wow, PGC one yeah. perfect. Sorry, I was writing notes. That's amazing. All right, I'm just gonna go back to um, to methylation, just to just to kind of uh, have an idea. So potentially, if I understand this correctly. Uh, so let's say I do my, and this can now be tested. My methylation can be tested. My methylation clock can be tested. So let's say I do my methylation test right now, and my biological age happens to be 33, exactly my uh, uh, my age. And then I, I started implementing some changes in my life, and then I want to see if those changes in my life are having a good effect or a negative effect. Then I retake the test. 
and yeah. and then I see whether my biological age has been going up or down. Is yeah, that is that that's right? Yeah, that's right. That's that's what we want people to do. We we would like people to take it <laughs> twice a year, every year, you know, for the foreseeable future, so we can understand a lot more about aging. But we have to understand a lot more about what the people who are taking the tests are actually yeah. doing. Because everything from your food to the amount of sleep to the general lifestyle that you live is going to affect that test. The beauty of that test compared to taking like a whole genome sequencing is your yeah. genome is pretty static. It doesn't change the methylation clock. You can change it. So let's say that you uh, decided to take some extreme diet yeah. and you're like, I'm just, I'm only going to eat onions and prunes or I'm only going to eat meat or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, you might lose weight, but are you actually putting years on your life? Or are you taking years off of your life? These are the things that we want to find out. So this is what our bioinformatics at BioViva has been set up to do. We, we created a, a methylation clock called the timekeeper. We okay. say the timekeeper is here. And um, this clock uh, is designed, it actually takes the most data points that you can get in a methylation clock. So almost, you know, I mean, very few of them are actually understood at this point, but that's the beauty of it. We can understand them over time. So there's 850,000 CPG sites that it actually analyzes. Wow. And we want to see what's the difference in uh, the big picture when people take a gene therapy or when mm -hmm. they do lifestyle changes and see if we can actually suss out more biomarkers out of the CPG sites than have been found before. That's amazing. So that's the service that you as BioViva, so that's available right now for people. Yeah, yeah. People okay. can access that right now. They can go to the website. It's bioviva-science.com and it's, uh, they can buy it. It shows up in a couple of days. It's a beautiful kit and okay. um, minimal waste, which I really love. Thank and you. Um, it, you can find out more about you, which is, you know, your most important asset. So if I, if I, sorry, I, I'm being very selfish. I'm going to, sorry, audience, I'm going to ask this for me. <laughs> if I, <laughs> if I order, if I order the kit, so then I get the test. Um, the information that I'm going to get uh, back after the test is, uh, is basically my uh, biological age. Right, or, or is, that's okay. right. That's great. Amazing. Alrighty. Um, I wanted to ask you also a couple of, thank you so far. I just wanted to ask you also um, a, a couple of, um, of questions um, regarding I mean, you, uh, especially uh, with, with your company, probably you have seen, um, and I know you offer a lot of recommendations, the lifestyle recommendations. And I know that, you know, the more we move towards the future, the future, the more we're going to have like personalized therapy. And I mean, we just talked about it, you know, the, the ter uh, any type of therapy would be personalized based on my gene, based on my gut and another, and another number of factors. Of, of factors. However, if there is, would you, would you like to give some uh, general um, recommendations that anyone, regardless of their genome and so on, um, can apply for, to improve their health tomorrow? And I would love to, do, to be that, let's say, in three levels, if, if it's possible. Something that I see the, the granted, you know, the, the, the normal people that, you know, those things that people know already, but some people never practice, but it's good to remind them. And then the second level, which can be maybe supplementations and so on. And then the third level, which can be probably the more extreme stuff. Okay. <laughs> well, number one, I can tell you, get out and exercise. Yeah. You know, don't over exercise. Don't do don't go too extreme or else you're just going to bang yourself up. But go out and move your body. And I actually have on my own program. I someday I will actually share it with the world because it's kind of like mm -hmm. a no pain sort of way to get people started and really make them successful in their workouts, not push them so far that they're sore the next day and then they don't want to work out for three days. There's a lot of people who like pain around exercise. Mm -hmm. I don't actually like it and I can build my body up really strongly. 
uh, gene therapy or no gene therapy mm -hmm. by just practicing doing exercise correctly and in small doses and building up to larger doses, making really successful for people. So go out and exercise, do it every day of the week and don't push yourself to the point where you're not going to move for two weeks because then you're, mm -hmm. you're just going to lose every gain that you, you might have, have gathered. Um, I mean, diet, I, I'm not an expert in mm -hmm. diet. I always suggest that people talk to my friend Ray, uh, Ray Cronice. Um, he has done amazing work with a lot of famous people, mm -hmm. including Penn of Penn and Teller, helped him lose, you know, like a lot of weight and actually keep it off for years. He does lifestyle and he actually does diet that's healthy for your body. So I would defer that because I, I mean, with dieting, you know, losing weight, like I said mm -hmm. before, doesn't necessarily mean healthy. Okay. And, um, so there's a lot of diets out there that are not very healthy. And so eating healthy is, is the most important thing and just exercising on top of it. As far as supplements, uh, a woman that I love is uh, Dr. Sandra Kaufman, and she's got a protocol. She's got a mm -hmm. book. It's Dr. Sandra Kaufman that people should check out. And it looks at the hallmarks of aging, similar to the hallmarks of aging that BioViva looks at uh, mm -hmm. with gene therapy, except for it looks at the lowest hanging fruit in nutraceuticals that actually do have a beneficial effect. So, you know, no, no, no stuff that you don't want with i'm trying not to say like rude words but no mm -hmm. nothing that you don't want to have in your diet or that isn't proven to have an effect so um i would suggest her for diet and then you know i mean where you're going where we're all going as long as we can get these um, gene therapies affordable is gene therapy you know the the beauty of gene therapy is you're going to do it once or twice in your life and it's going to stick with you and it's going to have the biggest bang for the buck because it actually is fixing the problem at the nucleus of the cell, making the cell more youthful and, and healthier. And, and the gene therapies are just gonna get better over the years. So we're sitting on gene therapies now that create regeneration. All four gene therapies that we look at extended uh, animal lifespan. <laughs> Humans live a long time. So, you know, we're, we're really excited to see how long our customers uh, live or integrated health systems customers rather. And, um, you know, we're really excited about that, but that would, that would be, you know, the top tier and hopefully that top tier becomes so inexpensive and so ubiquitous that in the next 20 to 25 years, you know, everybody's just participating in them, you know, not thinking that they're much of a big deal because I mean, how we do medicine today, it's called sick care. We mm -hmm. wait till you get sick. Yeah. Then we saw your chest open and, you know, operate on your heart and throw some veins from your leg onto your heart and hope that it takes and, you know, saves your life. Uh, you know, people think that gene therapy sounds, oh, gene therapy, that sounds really serious. I mean, it's a series of injections may keep you from ever needing to have your chest sawn open. I mean, the, the, the promise of this technology is amazing. There are several gene therapies that are starting uh, in, in their basic paperwork towards clinical trials for just cardiovascular disease. This area is expanding. We have a database that we're hoping to open to the general public in the next year. We're still building it. If I would have built it, I started building this database actually, I think in 2014 before I started BioViva. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I could have put it together in three months with what was known in gene therapy. Now it will take us, it, we'll be working on this for years, updating it because there's so much good science coming. That's that's amazing. That's that's great. I wanted to to ask you for and I love the the example uh, that you've done. And I think uh, the more we move forward, the more people would think about gene therapy just as a normal therapy, which it is because it's very covered by science. Like you know, like you said, is is right right now at this point in time, there is a lot of science behind it. But I'd like to know, especially for people who are listening, how. I know it would be difficult to explain it in single words, but uh, how what what actually happens when I do a gene therapy? Let's say for my telomeres. Yeah, so gene therapy is kind of like uh, the ultimate nanotechnology. It, hmm. it is a very small, you can't see it mm -hmm. um, type of technology, and I'll tell you how it works. 
First of all, I'll tell you how viruses work. Right now yeah. we're dealing with the corona uh, virus where we're dealing with COVID-19 or the SARS-CoV-2. But um, how a virus works is it is inhaled or it gets into your bloodstream and it attaches to a cell and it puts in its genetic material. And then that genetic material uses the machinery of your cells in order to replicate itself. This is an evolutionary machine that is all around us. Viruses are in bacteriophages. If you really want to nerd out, go mm -hmm. go and search bacteriophages on on the internet, and you will mm -hmm. have uh, you will be absolutely amazed of this great war of bacteria and bacteriophages that happen every day. But viruses in general, what they're really good at is getting into cells and getting their genetic material into cells. Mm -hmm. With gene therapy. We use viruses that are not like scary, like the COVID-19 virus, but viruses that know how to get into cells, but we take out their ability to get you sick. We take out their ability to replicate. And what we put in is a therapeutic gene. So what are they good at? They're good at unlocking, knocking on the door of a cell mm -hmm. and saying, hey, I want in. I've got some material here. I'm just doing a special delivery to the cell. Mm -hmm. Well they deliver just the therapeutic genes. And what happens is the therapeutic genes then go into the nucleus of the, the cell and they start coding for proteins. So your chromosomes, every cell in your body has chromosomes and the chromosomes all have genes that have DNA and the DNA codes for proteins and that makes everything about you. Okay, so yeah. go look in the mirror, off, you know, there's even evidence of how we think and, and, and how we deliberately uh, behave in the world is vastly because of our genes. So what we're doing is putting in a therapeutic gene, a human, a, a human gene that you already have, but we're upregulating it so you have more regenerative capacity in your cells. And so we've taken this beautiful thing that nature does to you every year anyway. So you take your own gene therapies anyway mm -hmm. with viruses. We give you the ability to take therapies that are beneficial and healthy for you. And that's pretty much what it's like. So for a patient, um, most of the therapies, uh, they would just come and they would sit and they would get an IV in their arm mm -hmm. and they would be overseen by a medical doctor and medical staff. And maybe after two hours, uh, they're done. The, the medical drip comes out and they are observed for a few days and then they get back to their life and they just do regular check-ins with the doctors uh, to, to see that everything is okay. But for a patient, it's, it's, not, um, it's not very invasive. It's, it's considered minimally invasive. It's like a normal IV injection. So like from, from yeah. the from the outside look of the patients. Of course, at the back of the scenes, there is way more happening. Um, yeah, there's a lot. In the, <laughs> in the world of the cells, there's a lot happening. It's really interesting. It's really fan uh, fantastic. You know, they're, 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 um, but on, on the outside appearances, not much is happening. And the body really internally isn't reacting to the new gene therapies. A lot of the problems of the old gene therapies had been, has been fixed. So it's unlikely that you would even get a fever or anything. You, you literally are just going to start to slowly over the next few weeks feel the benefits of the gene therapies. That's, that's amazing. What I was not uh, expecting is that you need, let's say, top-ups. For, so for, let's say for the same gene therapy, let's say still for the example telomeres, I'll do it today. Uh, I was expect once I have to regulate a gene, then what's the reason why I need, let's say, a top up after a few years? So with, um, with some of the gene therapies, so there are five regulated gene therapies right now. Okay. Yeah. There are five that have passed through regulations and they're a one-time treatment to a lifetime cure. Okay. And that's because the amount of the upregulation of the gene therapy that you need is limited. So a full statin gene therapy, if you do the right amount the first time, you probably will never need it again in your life. Um, maybe you would in 60 years, you know, just due to cellular turnover. But a 
a gene therapy like telomerase is a little bit different because with mm -hmm. telomerase, we're trying to hit every cell in the body. And right now there's no delivery method that will hit every cell in the body. So could we extend significantly the lifespan of a human or organism with one treatment? Yeah, that's very possible. It's been shown in animal studies that one dose can in fact do that. But what we're trying to do is really break uh, the boundaries of health span and lifespan. So that probably will need multiple therapies. We don't know yet, but I'm willing to be the first person to try that to see if in fact that does have a benefit. That's amazing. I can be the second person if you want. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, no, I just wanted to give a little bit uh, of context of people who, um, because some of the people who are listening are just approaching to 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 this world. So, um, for it's just just to give them them an idea of how powerful it is. So we got chromosomes. On top of our chromosome, we got telomeres. Those are those little caps. Every time a cell divides, this telomere becomes shorter and shorter and shorter. To put into a graph, um, eighty years old children would have way longer telomeres than an eighty is. 80 years old uh, person. Perhaps the conclusion, the shorter your telomeres, the, the more you're, uh, uh, you're aging. Uh, and there are even some animals that uh, they have uh, a very good telomerase, which is the enzyme that upregulates the telomeres. Uh, they have a very big uh, telomerase uh, activity. And those animals, they live for thousands of years. Um, so ju I just wanted to give this context to people who are listening just to, I'm not saying we're going to live for thousands of years, but what I'm saying is that, you know, just one simple gene therapy, like the one for telomerase can have potentially a very huge impact for, uh, yeah. for longevity. And I say longevity because it's not just, it's, it's not about living forever. It's about living at your best for the longest. Yeah. Um, so so that's that yeah and i mean there's so many things that are tied to telomere length so um i mean let's just consider do short telomeres in humans uh, meet a shorter lifespan there's a disease called progeria and these children are born with short telomeres and they die of all the diseases of aging but in their teen years uh so you know that is is our telomeres associated with with lifespan yeah of course they are they're not a perfect gauge though because when they become short when we're old they often go into a senescent cell cell state and they can stay short for a long period of time so they're not a perfect measurement but they're they're pretty accurate to health outcomes at minimum so there are a couple ways of looking at aging so you david sinclair is looking at cell reprogramming make the make the cell act young well, that, that's great, and it would be perfect if you also lengthen telomeres, because if you don't, you still have the Hayflick limit. You still have a limited number of cellular divisions. So think about it that way. Reprogramming a cell to behave young would make an organism young. Uh, lengthening telomeres would make it so the organism also had more cell divisions, and so doing both, it would be you know, the most highly beneficial. Yeah, indeed, very powerful. And a book that I recommend for people who are listening is called the Telomere, uh, the Telomere Effect, which kind of, I think, explains very beautifully and in a very simple manner uh, what this is all about. Um, another question I had for you, and I'm going to step back on, on methylation. Uh, do you reckon um, the... Uh, we, do, are we going to have, do you reckon, in a future, maybe, maybe just in a few years... Um, a kit that people can use at home. So let's say I can make, I can have a low cost methylation kit that I take today at home and I get the results right away. And then I can do the same thing in a week, two weeks. Like, do you, do you reckon, because of course they are a great thing, uh, but do you reckon, first of all, they will get cheaper? Second, second of all, I think it's still worth, it's very worth doing it right now. But do you reckon, Will they get a little bit cheaper? And do you reckon, will they get uh, even faster to track the results? Something that people can do themselves at home. 
Yeah, they, they, all of this technology will get cheaper and faster and better and companies will come in and have more interest. Uh, maybe companies like Apple and Mac Microsoft will ha come in and have more interest in actually getting your real time data right, um, right where you're sitting, because there's a lot of benefits for health and by understanding where you're at right now, they're pretty expensive today with, with our kit, um, it has very low profitability. Actually, we, we made the kit to use in patients yeah. before and after gene therapy. It's synonymous with getting your whole genome sequencing done. So what one kitting company might take 3000 uh, sample uh, CPG sites, we take 850,000 because we're trying to look at everything. So the cost of, of doing that test just on one person yeah. is almost the cost of our kit right now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's not a great, but you know, we don't do things for profit. We do things because we, they're the right, right thing to do. And so, but even that technology in the next few years will be less expensive. So, you know, we are hoping, and that that's the hope of the whole industry is to make things as, as less expensive, as, as it come as, at as little expense as possible to the consumer. Because if you have a kit that's $500, you have very few people who are gonna buy it. If we could offer the kit for $99 and had a lot of people buying it, even if we made $2, we, we'd make more money. And of course we would love to do that. Right now with the technology we're using, we can't do that. But in the next few years, yeah, we, sh we should be able to easily do that. Yeah, and I'm optimistic about this. Uh, I remember uh, just uh, a normal gene sequencing w would be, you know, thousands of dollars, and now is hundreds. So already the a, a big jump. Uh, do, do you give with the methylation kit? Uh, I know that because people are going to ask. Do you do you also get things like I um, um, you know if you are a fast caffeine metabolizers and MTHFR? Do you see also these things, or that's separate for? No, that, those things are what you would find in your genome. So those, okay. those would be readings that you would find due to the association of certain genes in your body. With, with the methylation kit, you're going to find out different markers uh, than the ones that you would there. And so that's why you always want to, your pharmacodynamics, you, you want to get your genomes uh, sequenced as well. You don't want to just do a methylation kit. You should know as much about your genes as you possibly can. Another thing, remember, every test out there is not the same. Yeah. So if they have low times analysis, you know, you might only pay a few hundred dollars, but the accuracy might be pretty low. So, you know, my suggestion is pay a little more and at least get some sort of research grade uh, readout. And those are still more expensive, but they'll tell you more accurately what's actually happening with your body. Would be too much for me to ask you for maybe company recommendations for genome test oh boy um that is ever changing you know what mm -hmm. i will i will get with my team and see who's the best who's the hottest for the best price mm -hmm. and uh and i'll have them get back to you about that because that's ever changing it seems like even recently some companies went out of business so yeah <laughs> the problem is is like you have a really good company and then they say okay we're just going to go for the data we're going to offer this cheap inefficient like or free and we're going to go for the data because the valuation on the data is so great. And then that didn't really pan out for a bunch of companies. And those tests are actually really expensive to run if you yeah. want an accurate test. No, that that's true. And yeah, I know that some, some companies that they, they don't do for profit, they literally uh, cover the costs. Some of them, they also go slightly in a loss with the hope of making them profit with the data. Talking about data, I know we're going a little bit too far, but I just want to open a bracket and then close it. Do you have any, because I know it's a common concern for a lot of people who wants to get like a genome test. Do you have maybe any recommendation on how to protect your data if you want to, or if that is even a reason of concern, if I going to get like a genome test? Yeah, well, there's there's two things. You know, yeah. you should you should take care of your needs uh, first. Uh, yeah. But I, I okay, so you should go with a company that that will protect your data. That if you say that you don't want the data used, that they will not use it. We are one of those companies. Mm -hmm. But you should definitely use a company that you feel comfortable with. Yeah. But then I'm going to go ahead and flip this because 
the, the truth of the matter is there's not a lot right now in the human genome that is outside of our grasp, that's outside of our parameters. If you have something that is catastrophic, as, as a health community, we probably knew it soon after you were born. It was probably mm -hmm. something like sickle cell anemia or hemophilia B. The more people are open with their data and realize that there's not much to hide in the average human genome, for the most part, we know how you'll die. You're, you're, a third of you will die of cancer, a third of you, more than a third of you will die of heart disease, and the rest of it will be dementia, accidents, um, you know, kidney yeah. failure and uh, COPD. And those are the biggest killers. So there's not much to hide out there, guys. The, the thing is, the more data you share, the more we can solve the problems faster. So we do suggest that you share your data for research and let us use it for research purposes. Um, that's the way that we can make precision mes medicine faster. It's kind of like, you know, the whole thing where, you know, people became very sensitive about what was on their com computer and what they were surfing on the yeah. web. But the thing is, is that most people are you know, smack dab predictable, you know, humans didn't turn out to be that different <laughs> from <laughs> each other there. There are a lot of them are all surfing the same things. And so there's not really much to hide in that data. And, mm -hmm. and if there is an outlier, you know, either you're a really cool person or you really need some help. So <laughs> <laughs> hey, only you could know that. So um, the health data is the same thing. The more you share, the more we understand about humans, the better we can actually serve and cater to what humans need. And in, in the case of our company, that would be better help. That's great. Um, I want to also ask you, what's BioVault? I know that you have an, an offer. Uh, that's a, a, another of your product. So you got TimeKeeper to measure your methylation clock, but you also have BioVault. And uh, did I pronounce that correctly? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's called the BioViva BioVault. We're excited about this product mm -hmm. and this project because it's going to expand exponentially. We want people who are biohackers. We want people who are just, you know, doing basic interventions or nothing with their health participating in this. Again, you can share your data or you don't have to. If you don't want to share your data, you don't want to participate like that, consider it like Dropbox for your health data. Yeah. It's a place where you can keep everything. So let's say, you know, you've gotten a, a full genome uh, sequencing in one place. Let's say you've gotten a methyl methylation test in another place. Let's say you've gotten your microbiome uh, mm -hmm. analyzed and then you've got all of your medical records and you're having to log in to all of these different places to assess, to access your data and, and um, you know, you know, have them store it. We want you to put it in one place. And then if you will allow us to, we will actually use that to, to help you know, cure aging and disease. And so think of it again as Dropbox for your health data. Mm -hmm. And then outside of that, we hope to over the next few years start to give you assessments of you know correlations between your data let's say you have your microbiome and you have your methylation and you have your genome we want to tell you with the newest science the newest research papers out there what your risks are and what your health benefits might be for having the certain combination that you have so um also, the BioVault, everyone who gets a timekeeper gets a year free of BioVault because that's where you get your that's results. You get, to, uh, you get to access the BioVault, you get to go in and put in your information, and you get to see your, your results uh, right there. So it's a HIPAA compliant, GDPR compliant system, and we're, we're really proud of it. And it's still vastly you know, under development. It's going to be mm -hmm. changing a lot uh, over the years. No, that's 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 great, and uh, I know, guys, you've been having some great progress over over the year. Um, oh, that's amazing! That's amazing news. So, where where people uh, do you also serve in uh, in Australia or like internationally or just in the US? We can serve. We can send kits all over the world, so okay. uh, people can use the the timekeeper and the bio vault from from almost anywhere in the world. Now, if you're if you're in a country that has specific regulations about health testing kits coming in and out, you know you might want to check that before you order it. But we haven't had a problem so far getting it to. I mean, far reaches. 
it, we're, we're pretty amazed of all the variety of different countries that are have people in them that are interested in our kit. That's amazing. I'm going to ask you one more question. Um, and then I, uh, and then I'm going to let you go. <laughs> um, I mean, you're welcome to stay as much as oh, no, I would love to stay, but you know, I have to tell you, Rana, I'm really tired today and I'm not myself and I'm going to tell you why. Mm -hmm. Tell me it's not why. because of gene therapy. We got a new puppy last night. Oh my God, really? What's, and the, what's... Puppy, the puppy is so cute. I wish he was here, but he's in another room <laughs> sleeping. And I'm so glad he's sleeping because mm. he came straight from a farm to the house and he howled all night. And everyone was so oh. sad. We were up with him, petting him. Oh, it's okay. And he was, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I'm particularly tired today. So I, I'm sorry to say that I'm not my best for you today but that's, it's for a good reason for a good cause <laughs> that's so cute that's so good you look great and uh you, you know you're sharing great content anyway so that's uh that's it good but i know i know the feeling i have a cat which sometimes during the interviews just pass by and people can see in the camera and right now i just putting it just teasing me but uh, yeah, yeah i've got one right over here and <laughs> actually um she came in and that's why i've kept looking up because sometimes she'll jump right at me and she's done that before so i was like <laughs> don't, do don't, it. don't jump at me and they love interviews i mean you know especially yeah. during interviews when i'm on the phone she just goes around and trying to to disturb but now she's been good she's been behaving better than better than usual um i think they wonder what we're doing because a yeah. cat only gets loud when they really have to so they're probably like why are you going meow 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 <laughs> to your computer <laughs> i know i know she's looking at me right now <laughs> yes we're talking about you we're talking about you bagheera um oh, bagheera yeah she's black she's she's all black and when i took her she's very little but she was very scared so she was always hissing <laughs> So black, yeah. Bagheera, like the Jungle Book. It was an I obvious, it was an obvious choice. Um, what an honorable name. Yeah. <laughs> um, ah, yes, my question. I'm actually curious because I'm very curious to, to know the mindsets of people, especially in your space. Um, do you reckon how utopistic it is to have a world where a 100 years old person looks like a 50 years old person or 60 years old pe person do you reckon is oh. utopia or do you reckon we have a line of hope oh yeah i i mean i think that that's absolutely obtainable i mean actually okay one thing that we we did when i started this company we went back and looked at historical perspective i mean you know most of the pictures of charles darwin he was mm -hmm. only 40. i mean people People didn't have the, the type of health, um, sanitation, uh, immunizations, antibiotics that we do. And, you know, people who suffered from a lot of diseases, even in our parents' age, ended up dying younger because of, you know, conditions that went with uh, hand in hand with rheumatoid, uh, not rheumatoid arthritis, but some of the um, rheumatic fevers and things like that, that, mm -hmm. that they took instead of being immunized against. So we already live younger and better today. Uh, we already uh, benefit vastly from technology uh, that uh, seems uh, almost uh, magical to people a hundred years ago. And, and we're looking better than ever. You know, we know about the sun and unfortunately we didn't in my generation because, you know, I'm almost 50 and what I, I mean we laid out in the really? sun until we were uh, we would be like oh gosh Rana. i mean we were like so brown i mean our clothes glowed on us because we were practically rain so <laughs> <laughs> but even in generations now we'll do better but what we'll do now is we'll use these therapies and we will regenerate skin um you know my skin looks better now than it did uh before i did the gene therapies and hopefully we'll get better and better output from the therapies as they get better over the years because you know regenerating all of your organs you know i'm not i love makeup and i love doing my hair and um 
I, I'm, I like being a woman, you know, and I, I like all of those things. And, um, but I'm actually not a, a vain person. I don't think, I, I don't think of it as vanity. Um, the gene therapies, I think of them as survival and survival is smart. Uh, vanity can be smart or dumb depending on how it's used. <laughs> but, um, I, you know, gene therapy isn't just about being like, oh, I'm 20 and, you know, full of foolishness. It has nothing to do with that. It's about being smart. It's about living long and getting even smarter. I agree. Great answer. And, and I, I'm totally with you. I mean, who doesn't want to be that bad and even physically, right? Especially with the, with the, um, with the other gene for the muscles. I mean, is you know, it's only normal that people wants to be healthy for longer. And sorry, I'm gonna be a bit controversial, but is I mean, some people are gonna hate me for, for it. But it just sucks being, um, I don't know, 90, 100. And you know, there are so, so many people that are doing very well at their age and not be able to do the things that gives us the most fulfillment in life. Like, you know, spend time with our parents traveling and being independent. And, uh, you know, and if I think about it, it's scary that a vast majority or a big percentage of people that are over 60 and maybe they get to live up to 90, that's 30, 67 years, that's 30 years, they spend 30 years of their life, you know, in a condition where they are maybe not independent or, uh, you know, and and that's scary. It's true. Yeah. So statistically, you know, uh, today... 30% 30% of your life will be spent in ill health, in chronic disease. Hundreds of millions of people today have chronic disease. So I don't want people who are listening to this today to aspire to be healthy for your age, 90 year old. I want you to be aspire to be actually healthy, 90 year old. And, and that means that we have to bring out the new medicine. We need to regenerate bodies and keep them healthy. And uh, we don't want you to live old longer. We want you to be as chronologically old as you would like to be, but, but absolutely robustly, youthfully healthy. And so the, the, the type of human that we are creating for the future isn't something that we've seen before because a 20-year-old, uh, if you look at the biology, they're accumulating damage. Yeah. A 30-year-old has accumulated a, a, enough damage to, that we could probably, by looking at you and doing testing, we could understand what your shortest fuse was, what you'll probably die of already. Um, you won't wow. die now, you'll die later, but we could see, do you have atherosclerotic plaque buildup? Do you have mitochondrial dysfunction? You know, what, what systems of your body are falling apart? So we want to create the first body that stays in homeostasis for as long as possible so that people have a meaningful life. I, I mean, there's, there, to me, there's only dignity and progress. And so you don't have to choose for gene therapy. You don't, you can, if you, if you find meaning in life by getting old and degenerate, and I don't mean to be rude, it, it, yeah. it can be a beautiful process for some people. And if that's how you want to go and let go of your life, uh, and you find meaning in that, that's fine. I, I don't, I find meaning in progress. So if, if I died because I participated in therapeutics that, um, that were cutting edge, uh, that, that's my choice. And that to me still has more meaning than not trying at all. And you know, today these technologies are proving safer than ever. I mean, lots of people are taking them and uh, we're seeing really good outcome and no, not a negative outcome. And so hopefully this type of technology just continues to develop through several biotechnology companies that are working on it. And, and the world becomes more interested and participates because I would rather you be alive and having a good time with me than, than not. Thank you. Is uh, I I have to say I have a deep admiration for what you do and deep respect for what you do. Like, um, oh, thank you. Um, you are very inspiring. Um, for people who wants to uh, get to know a little bit more about you and about your company, and guys, if you're listening, you should because there are just go on the Viva Bev website, especially in the FAQ. I love that page. You you state a lot of very interesting things like overpopulation uh, oh my god if i'm not gonna die what's the overpopulation problem and, and and you you explained that very clearly on the website but for people who want to know a little bit more where they can uh find uh more about you and your company well 
outside of the website, uh, you can go to, um, I think that uh, Adam Alonzi has done a great job putting together the BioViva YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. uh, if you like to look and listen uh, to what's going on, and that that's a really good place to go. Uh, you can go and check out some other media. We've been around for a long time. We've been in everything from uh, the London Times to National Geographic. Um, you know, go and do a search and, and, and find some things that we've done. But um, I think the, the best of what uh, BioViva has done is actually yet to come. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I hope that you stand with us to the future and help us take this march against uh, biological aging and childhood disease and, you know, really help us have an impact and work together. We're vastly a company about people working together. And like I said, I think the best is yet to come. I think there's some stuff to read. And we talked about that doing gene therapies and other people participating in gene therapies. But the future is, uh, I say, I'd say the next 10 years are, are what you want to keep your eyes on. <laughs> oh, that's great. Thank you very much, Liz. You've been truly inspiring, such a lot of content. And I loved this interview. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Hey there. Thanks for listening. Before we conclude, I'd like you to remind you something very, very important. This episode, as well as this podcast in general. Hey there. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. In fact, I'm recording this from your phone right now. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many other platforms. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. And it's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So go ahead, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm anchor to get started. Is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. Listeners should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice for any medical condition they may have. Please, 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 if you have any medical condition, consult your physician first. Disclaimer given, I would love for you to subscribe to this podcast and to leave me a review. That will help me a lot. We're just starting out. We have already a lot of great interviews down the line, which you don't want to miss. So hit the subscribe button so you will get a notification for the next exciting episode. I'll see you next time.